Hey everybody, this is Jake with Myers Flies. Uh, we're getting into that end of summer where um, people are getting ready to kind of get geared up for steelhead and the salmon salmon runs where you know the steelhead come up and uh, especially up in the Ontario tribs come up and eat the eggs. The brown trout come up while the salmon are spawning and eat those eggs. And of course, out Erie Way. Uh, that I'm tying an order right now that's going out uh, to Washington, PA area. We send a lot of these flies out there. But um, anyhow, somebody had asked me about doing a video on this. I thought I did, so I apologize uh, for not doing it. This is uh, what I call a psycho egg stone. Um, I don't know. I just came up with it. Um, you know, it's a wire body stone fly. I mean, it's nothing... Uh, you know that's uh, totally out of the box i mean obviously there's a lot of patterns that are like this but uh, i just kind of mixed up some colors that i wanted to try and that worked well for me and so i just wanted to kind of pass them along uh, this is the the chartreuse egg that we kind of put out the back this is a a wire body there's a material list there um, you know for you but anyhow just a, just a stone fly pattern that we put on and uh, then I've, I'll show you the other is a uh, just the orange type egg bead you can put there are so many different kinds of beads it'd be endless what you could do with that but um, but anyhow this uh, this works really well because of all the wire it is a large ultra wire so uh, you don't really have to add lead to this it sinks fine on its own uh, so um, Anyhow, we're going to show you how to tie this here. Uh, this is a, uh, it's a Daiichi 2451. Now, this is a size 4. And right away, you know, you'll think, oh my goodness, size 4, that's monstrous. Uh, not really. Uh, the, the size 4 really is the hook gap. Now, I'm going to show you a comparison of a, uh, the Daiichi, the 1750. This is a size 8. This is a streamer hook. And I'm going to line the eyes up here just for a comparison so you can see. So the eyes are lined up. And you'll see there the difference really is in the hook gap. This has a really nice hook gap on it, which I really like. And uh, super strong hooks. This, you know, 1750, I do a lot of streamers and stuff like that on for trout. You can use them for steelhead as well. Um, if a bigger salmon would get on this... It, you know, it'll straighten out that hook. I've had them straighten this, uh, you know, the 1750. It's just not, it's not a heavy wire. Uh, so really it's, you know, not fair to, uh, you know, to put that up against something like that. But it's about the same size as far as length, but you'll see it's a lot nicer hook gap. So uh, don't be scared of the size four. I think Daiichi has these in a six as well, and then they go up into even bigger sizes. But uh, this is a really nice. I do a lot of the um, patterns for stone flies and the you know the different uh, streamer patterns and things for the the steelhead because sometimes you'll catch salmon, you know, and uh, you might not be targeting the salmon, but um, but at anyhow. It, it, they're there and so if you catch one i just don't want to straighten out a bunch of hooks so um i've got the uh, fluorescent charisse uh thread here and uh, that's a 5 30 second black nickel bead and i'm just going to start that there behind the the hook now i'm going to do these because i'm actually tying <laughs> tying these up for an order these are uh, the red now i've got this marked about the same spot all the time on my on my vise and what i'll do is just kind of get a wrap or two around there and then i pull this line up and cut it now these these eggs are tied on here with what's called a polymer knot it's a very simple knot to tie um, you know you can look those knots up on youtube i'm not going to do one here but, uh, but anyhow, it's just a polymer knot. And then that knot's just a little trailer. It allows you to do a little trailer egg, you know, right behind there. And you can do these, be you, these eggs in different sizes. And then what I like to do when I'm wrapping this is come underneath. Go underneath of your, 
of your line and then wrap down again and that's going to really help i mean this thing you're not going to move that egg uh you could glue it if you want but it's really i'll just do a couple and then i'll come underneath of it and i'll do a couple and then i'll come i'll wrap it around and throw it underneath of it and what that's doing is it's locking that egg down and then what i do is i'll i'll counterclockwise spin my thread bobbin and that kind of flattens out this ultra thread and that way i can get a nice flat area back here and i'm going to go about where that hook bend is my hook point is right in here i'm sorry the barb point and so i'm going to go about there and build up just a little ball right here on the back and that ball is going to help splay you can see it. it's not much it's just a little bump <clears throat> and then uh I always like to keep my thread flat because when you wrap wire, I'll show you in a minute, you really need to keep your thread flat. So I'm going to take my, my goose by it, purple by it, and you'll see there's a natural curve to that by it. You can see it's kind of, it's going down like this. What I want to do is I want to put it to where the curve is against the shank of my hook so it's it's naturally going to splay out away from the hook and then i usually put that almost to the bead okay i don't want to get it back into the bead but just almost to the bead and then i'm going to take one wrap and get that to hold you can readjust it if you need to then i'm going to take the other one do the same thing on the other side i just put these in one at a time some guys like to put both in at the same time. Hey, whatever. And I'm just going to get that in place. Now I'm going to do another counterclockwise spin here on my thread, flatten it out because I want that to be nice and flat. And I'll just tie those, those bites down and I'll wrap it all the way back up here. And I want to get this flat. This thread base needs to be flat. Guys, you know, all the time say, I can't get my wire you know to lay in and my wires all jacked up i can't do a nice wire body whether it's a copper john or you know something like this you got to get the the thread bait the key is here not your wire once you get to your wire you're done whatever is underneath is what you're going to see up top okay so i'm going to get a nice flat base this is very nice and flat then i'm going to take my my wire this is a large just a large uh, fuchsia color ultra wire. And I put that up into the back of the bead. And I'm gonna do it, it's on my side of the hook. But I'm gonna put it up into the back of the bead. I don't wanna go too far, you'll shove it out the front of the bead. But I just wanna get right up into the back of the bead, tie it off, and then I'm gonna just run this down, straight back to the back. Now, once I get back to the back, again, I'm going to counterclockwise spin that thread. Okay. Get it nice and flat. Nice and flat. You don't want to be building up too much here. You know, you get too much underneath. And I'll run it back up to about there. And then, that way, when I come over the top, I'm not counter wrapping this. I'm just right over the top. Then I can just go touch the next you know the next one i just want to keep it i'm kind of keeping my my wire pushed back a little bit this way so that as i'm wrapping it it's getting tight to that last that last wrap and i'll just do this the whole way up if you've got a rotary vise this can be done a little bit easier I just like to make sure everyone is like this. I don't have a rotary vise. I know I need to come into 2020 and get a rotary vise. My brother, he's always telling me, you need to get the rotary vise. I, um, I, I've used them. They're nice. I just uh, I got used to this for several years. and Well, I'm just a stick in the mud, I guess. Now, I'm going to come up. And uh, I'm going to stop about there because I don't need to waste wire. I don't need, I, you know, all this from, from about right here where my finger is up is going to be wing case. 
so I don't need to waste the wire. But you see that body? It just it's a nice smooth wrap. The wraps are all tight. The body there at the back, you got a little hot spot. It just you know it just works. Now I'm gonna come bring this up. Okay, like I'm going to wrap around this side like this, and I'm gonna get my thread. And I'm gonna wrap this around this thread here, okay, and wrap it, and then just helicopter this off, okay? That way your th your your wire is trapped in there, and I'm gonna really crank down on this. This 140 denier, you can crank on it. Uh, now I'm gonna wrap back over these wraps here. This ain't never gonna go anywhere, okay? So um, now what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of uh, Mirage, the opal, tinsel in the um, for the wing cases the large tinsel so I just got a piece of it here doing several flies so um, it don't matter which way it goes and I'm going to wrap that in right on the top get it flat and then come back to about where I about where I want to be you know you're going to make sure you're you know wherever you want that proportion to be I want that wing case about so so I'm going to stop right there Then I'm going to take a little bit of this emergence dubbing this is a um, a uh, from nature spirit emergence dubbing this is the fluorescent hot pink and uh, I don't use dubbing wax hardly ever but uh, if you just put it on Thin enough, you know, just uh, just a little bit at a time. You don't need to clump it on there. That 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 body's already big enough, you know, because of the wire and and all of that. You don't you don't need much dubbing. Uh, you can put a little more on and pick it out if you want to. But uh, you know, once you get going with these, you can crank some out. Pretty decent. I um, just kind of going a little slower, just you know walking through these steps so just wrap back and just touch your wraps up through and we just need a little bit more up here I don't know it's probably two years ago I thought about this a, a customer had asked for you know a, a large copper John um, he saw some of my other patterns that have the trailer egg coming out the back and he says could you do that with a copper john and i'm like yeah i could do that and uh then i just kind of thought man i could do a wire body crazy colors steelhead love that junk so now i'm going to take the um the buy it so i'm going to put two on the top so again the natural curve goes down i'm going to let that stay down so i'm going to put that right on the top right on the top and just kind of splay it out um, and you know the tip of this is going to stay in line with the tip of this uh, hook point here okay so that's just you know proportion you know one of the things about fly tying that um, that I learned early and uh, you know it's just proportions you want to get a nice proportion uh, look to it do the fish look at that? Nah, I don't think so. I think fishermen do. <laughs> so, you know, making it look good. And, you know, just symmetry having, you know, you look at the naturals, natural stone flies and different things. Uh, now I'm going to tuck this underneath and then just kind of pull tight and wrap again. And that locks these bites down. I come up, snip them, pull my wing case back up over, wrap it twice. And after we wrap that, I'll pull this back and I'll just wrap it about another one or two times and you can snip that off just helps to lock that wing case in there and then I'm gonna again counterclockwise just spin it get that thread to flatten out a little bit and then you're gonna whip finish and that is it now what I like to do is come back through <clears throat> with a little bit of Solera's bone dry 
because you know those teeth are real aggressive you know on those larger fish and so i'll hit it uh typically i just do the top on like trout flies but i'll go all the way around with these salmon flies and you know with the steelhead stuff just because you know those bigger fish are going to tear that up so i like it to last you know we've got customers all the time that say you know hey i've been fishing this same fly for you know a year or two years or you know i've caught uh, uh one of our good customers and friends brandon krauser over uh on the donegal he um he's got he showed us one of the scuds that he got from us and uh he said i caught over 100 fish now on this one scud and it was still you know in good shape you know so you know you get what you uh you get what you pay for some of the bulk flies you know you fish it one time and it gets on a snag and it unravels but you know hey these um we kind of do it right try to do it right anyhow and so any hey, that's it that is the uh psycho egg stone fly you can pick that out you know a little bit if you uh, if you desire there at the bottom but um anyhow you can buy these on the website uh or now you can tie it uh, i think pretty much all the material you can get at uh, myersflies.com i don't know if we have any more of the hooks those daiichi 2451 uh if you need them i can i can get them for you it's not a problem we'll call our good friends up at daiichi and uh they'll make sure we have them in a couple of days so uh anyhow hey listen i want to encourage you guys i know it's like downtime a lot of bass stuff going on maybe fishing smallmouth and other warm water species you know give the trout a rest a little bit while the waters are warm and then you know get back at it in the fall and uh check us out myersflies.com also you know we do have a fly shop that uh my brother and i we've tried to get it uh get it going now and uh it's been going really good had a lot of good friends down there in dallas town um and so it's just a you know just a really neat place to come hang out drink a cup of coffee and uh talk some fishing and uh check out the stuff we've got there so make sure you take some you know young person out fishing and uh, get them in the outdoors and uh, teach them uh, teach them about respecting the land and taking care of some things pick up some trash uh, let them know what it is to you know keep our waterways clean and things of that nature and just enjoy god's great creation uh, i always feel like i'm in church you know when i'm out uh, when i'm out there obviously it's not a replacement for church but i always just feel like i'm just out there close to god and and uh, some really good stuff out there so um, hey you guys have great luck on the water and look forward to steelhead season uh, coming real soon god bless thanks for watching